Hey, what's up? I'm Andrew with Field Treasure Design. So behind me is my most recent project, a pegboard to help with my ongoing shop organizations. I love using pegboard and it's really easy to organize things as you can see, and it's actually not very hard to build. So I'd love to show you how I did it. So check this out. So for this project, I bought a four by eight sheet of pegboard and then cut it down to my size. I used my Craig rip cut to get the size correct using my circular saw. So then I brought my pegboard inside because my shop was so cold and I used 3M painter's tape at one inch width to make these really cool lines for all my kind of geometric patterns that I was going to do. A lot of it is just trial and error, kind of getting the shapes and patterns that you want. Then it was time to paint. I used three different colors for my project. So I just went and got samples from the paint store of the different colors that I wanted to use. It's a good tip to go and ask for samples instead of having to pay for like a large amount, like a quart or a gallon. Painting the pegboard turned out to be a little bit more difficult than I thought, just because it's got this top layer that's real slick, and so you have to do multiple coats to get that paint to really stick. The other thing that makes it a little harder is just the amount of holes in the pegboard. You just have to go around them and work your way around slowly. And now the fun part, taking off the tape to reveal the lines. For my design, I wanted the white lines to be a part of the design, so this worked out perfectly. You gotta go a little slower just so you don't rip off other paint with the tape. Next, I brought it back to the shop to make the back border for the pegboard. I'm using wood furring strips to act as the border behind the pegboard. What this is gonna do is allow it to stay rigid to hang as well as space it out. So I measure my top and bottom lines and then cut them to length. I then put the furring strips under the board and line them up. Then I grab my drill to do countersink holes before I screwed the screws in. I wanted my screws to be spaced evenly, so I grabbed my tape to help me measure them out. After the top and bottom were done, I grabbed my tape to help me measure in between for the sides. Then I just repeated the same process to make the sides. Here's a close-up of the countersink. The reason I do it is to help that screw become flush with the pegboard without making it split. The final step was to do one furring strip down the middle of the pegboard. Here I'm drilling the holes and then I'm going to screw them in. So here's what it looks like on the back side. To get ready to hang the pegboard, I found studs in my wall using my stud buddy. Then I marked the wall and then I used my level to transfer those lines to the actual pegboard. I then drilled holes all the way through the boards just so that I would avoid splitting them when I screwed them into the studs. Thankfully my awesome wife came and helped me hold it up while I got it secured to the wall. I also have my son in the corner kind of keeping an eye on things. I used my level to help me get things squared up and all of a sudden, wham, it fell right on me. Ouch! Luckily I stayed calm and everything was okay, but I did split my forehead wide open. I got one screw in and we did a fine tune just to make sure it was level. Then I was able to come back on my own and screw in the rest of the screws. I used two and a half inch deck screws. And as I wrapped up, you can see why I love having my son around. All done. Hey, Dad. Look, watch this. And there it is, the awesome new pegboard to hang tools and keep things organized and just add a little bit of fun color to the shop. Well, I hope you enjoyed this project and it inspired you to build something on your own. Thanks for watching and be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay connected. See you later.